Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar where we will be going over acute coronary syndrome in ACLS. Acute coronary syndrome or ACS is a collection of clinical presentations including unstable angina, non-ST elevation myocardial infarction, and ST elevation myocardial infarction. ACS is class classically recognized by one or more of the following symptoms. Crushing chest pain, shortness of breath, pain that radiates to the jaw, arm, or shoulder, sweating, and or nausea or vomiting. It is important to note that all individuals with ACS will present with these classic findings, particularly women and individuals with diabetes mellitus. It is impossible to determine a specific cardiac event from the ACS symptoms. Therefore, ACS symptoms are managed in the same way. Every individual with these symptoms should be evaluated immediately. If an individual appears to be unconscious, begin with the BLS survey and follow the appropriate pathway for advanced care. If the inv individual is conscious, proceed with the pathway that we'll talk about in this webinar. So first you want to, of course, activate EMS and then you want to present with oxygen. So use 4 liters per minute nasal canalia, titrate as needed. Aspirin, if there's no allergy, give 160 to 325 milligrams ASA to chew. Avoid coated ASA. Nitroglycerin, give 0.3 to 0.4 milligrams SL spray times two doses at three to five minute intervals. Do not use if the SBP is less than 90 milligrams of mercury. Uh... Do not use a phosphodiesterase inhibitor like Viagra was taken within the last 24 hours. For morphine, give 1 to 5 milligrams IV if symptoms were not relieved by nitrates or if symptoms recur, and monitor blood pressure closely. For the 12-lead ECG, evaluate for MI, ST elevation or depression, and poor R waves progression. For IV access, the large gauge IV and antecubital fossa. And then notify the hospital, take PCI center if probable, STEMI, and activate ACS protocol at hospital. So we're going to just run through the algorithm real quick here. So the symptoms of infarction or ischemia is the EMS assessment or hospital care. Support ABCs and prepare for CPR defibrillation. Give aspirin, morphine, nitroglycerin, and oxygen if needed. Obtain a 12-lead ECG. If there's ST elevation, notify the hospital. Note first medical contact in onset of time. Hospitals should prepare to respond to STEMI. And if pre-hospital fibrinolosis, use fibrolytic checklist. For the EMS assessment, hospital care, check vitals, the OTU saturation. Gain IV access. Perform targeted history or physical exam. Complete fibrolinic chest list and check contraindications. Obtain the preliminary cardiac marker levels, electrolyte, and coagulation studies. And obtain portable chest x-ray in less than 30 minutes. Immediate ED treatment includes if the O2 saturation is less than 94%, start O2 at 4 liters per minute and titrate. Aspirin 160 to 325 milligrams PO. Nitroglycerin spray or sublingual, and morphine IV if nitroglycerin is not effective. Interpret the ECG, so if the SD elevation or new LBBB, high possibility of injury or semi. So begin adjunctive therapies and do not delay reperfusion. If the onset time has been less than, um, yeah, less than or greater to 12 hours, then you're going to perform reperfusion goals so patient and center to find therapy criteria includes fibrolysis door to needle goal less than 30 minutes and PCI door to balloon inflation goal less than 90 minutes so we're going to skip to if the ST depression or dynamic T wave inversion high possibility for ischemia there's high risk and stable ang angina and non ST elevation MI UA or N STEMI so this is going to be the same thing if it has been greater than 12 hours for the ST elevation or newer LBBB. So 
Elevation troponin or high-risk patient, early invasive strategy. Ventricular tachycardia, signs of heart failure, hemodynamic instability, refractory ischemic, chest discomfort, persistent recurrent ST deviation. Begin adjunctive treatments including heparin, UFH, or LMWH, nitroglycerin. Consider clobaldogrel. Consider PO beta blockers. Consider glycoprotein inhibitor. And then monitor bed admission, determine risk status, continue heparin, ACS, or therapies, statin therapy, ACE inhibitor, or ARB, cardiology to risk stratify if not at high risk. Um, for normal non-diagnostic changes in T-wave or ST segment, low intermediate risk ACS, admit to ED chest pain unit and follow cardiac marker numbers, troponin. Continuous ST segment, repeat ECG monitor, non-invasive diagnostic tests. Develop the elevated troporin and or clinical high-risk features and or ECG changes consistent with ischemia. If there's um, physiologic testing, abnormal diagnostic, or non-invasive imaging, then you would go to the monitor bed admission, determine risk status, continue heparin, ASA, other therapies. Stand therapy, ACE inhibitor, ARB, cardiology to risk stratify if not at high risk. If there are not any physiological testing, abnormal diagnostic, non-invasive imaging, then discharge with follow-up if no evidence um, of infarction or ischemia by testing. Don't forget we offer online ACLS certification on our site. We encourage you to become certified as soon as possible, whether that be on your own time with an online course or in an in-classroom setting. You can find a link in the description to our course. So thank you so much for tuning into today's webinar. We will catch you guys the next time.